Morning, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Wednesday's trading session, the 30th of November 2016. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. Be sure to uh, visit the uh, apps as well on uh, via the phone, on the mobile devices, or via Android, Google Play, and the Apple's App Store. Okay, now in terms of uh, the uh, summation for this morning, really, I think the uh, the theme really has been OPEC. Even though yesterday we had a uh, a failure and no agreement, all of a sudden there's been a U-turn overnight. Uh, even though I fail to uh, believe in that, given the fact that the uh, games were being played by OPEC members yesterday, the Russians certainly were were uh, <coughs> not interested at all. The Iranians said that there was no such thing as a cut or a freeze. And the Saudis certainly didn't tolerate that as well, other than uh, obviously tolerating for Libya and Nigeria now. Certainly seems to be a full circle, full circle, full 360 move. And now it certainly seems to be that the market certainly is uh, is willing to uh, accept a potential oil deal. You've had a rally, given the fact that we sold off yesterday and the fact that we are going to fail with regards to an agreement. Oil prices went as low as 45. I'll bring up the chart of oil for you. You can see now we're currently uh, testing the $48 level. And what, what a move it's been. Okay, so if I move over to the four-hour chart, <clears throat> you can clearly see that we've broken past the resistance at 47, uh, approaching the 48. So certainly uh, an impressive move, to say the least. Okay, so let's just bring this up for you. Okay, so again, we're back into that diagonal trend line resistance now on oil. So certainly looking for risk aversion here. Okay, certainly looking for risk off. So full 360, folks. And we're back to the key level, which is uh, around the $48 level. Okay, and we be interesting to see whether or not we agree. Now, the latest news with regards to um, <clears throat> Russia is that they um, they do think that a, uh, a 400,000 barrel per day co is quite excessive. And the uh, the, <clears throat> the actual Iranians, uh, Iranians are, are not tolerating the fact that they are going to be at pre-sanction levels. That certainly won't please them, okay, given the fact that the whole concept of uh, of uh, taking the sanctions off was due to uh, the very sole reason of uh, increased revenue uh, for the state. So given the fact that uh, they've taken off the sanctions and they can put more oil, it would uh, defy the, um, <clears throat> the sanctions arrangement that they can. So again, it's all about revenue, folks, okay, it's all about revenue, and it's very unlikely for the... For the Iranians to agree, so the market certainly has seemed to have priced the uh, oil deal into them in uh, at this juncture. Now the other factor as well is that China was certainly down minus one percent overnight, so that certainly isn't good news. Indicates a risk aversion play. You've had three candles now on on, uh, on uh, the Chinese markets, and therefore signalling a potential top in the uh, Chinese market. So certainly keep an eye on that. Given the fact that we have weakness in China, that will reverberate in uh, European and. Um, US markets too. We are into that key resistance level, therefore looking for a flush lower. So with China down 1%, certainly risk aversion trade kicking in from my perspective and a very strong argument to go short at the froth. So as soon as this market tops out, which my understanding it already has because I'm short the FTSE at the moment, short the Euro stocks and the short the Nasdaq, certainly looking for a reversal here. Okay. In terms of uh, <clears throat> the Nikkei as well, the Nikkei certainly seems to have stalled as well on the daily chart. You can see Doji candles. So generally a stall in the Nikkei generally indicates a stall in global equity rally and therefore looking for a top on the US markets too. If I bring up the uh, <clears throat> chart of the USDJPY which really confirms the move in the uh, in the Nikkei, if I go over to the daily chart first and foremost you can see we've stalled, we've failed to go past the key uh, resistance line which is around the 113.8 which is 114. 60 minute chart too now is approaching the double top resistance and therefore looking for risk off. So again, <clears throat> from my understanding, you're looking for risk aversion, you're looking for markets to move lower. That's my interpretation thus far, okay, in terms of the next potential move in this marketplace at present, okay. So USD, JPY topping out, Nikkei, Shanghai topping out indicates resistance. The only thing that's keeping this market flow is the potential rally in OPEC and oil, and that certainly is coming to uh, resistance as well. So therefore, expect resistance in global equities. That's the understanding and that's the interpretation, okay? Right, uh, in terms of the economic data this morning, we've had stronger German retail sales, stronger uh, German um, employment data as well. That certainly did help European session or European markets to uh, thrust higher. Other than that, really low tier uh, data, not much of, uh, of any real really importance, to be honest with you. Okay, CPI data from uh, Europe certainly did come in, come in more or less in line. 
So no surprise there. Uh, Mr. Draghi's speech in the next 40 odd minutes. So we'll see how what Mr. Draghi has to say. That'll be interesting. Okay, now let's bring up the uh, technical picture now, folks. Okay, so the uh, German DAX certainly did uh, join in on the rally to a large extent, although it has topped out. You can see a topping tail there. So really, the only uh, index that's really benefited from oil really is the FTSE 100, and even that certainly is uh, looking uh, top heavy as well. 60 minute chart, they certainly went for that, ga that gap. I mean, I was really suspicious with regards to that gap. I had this perfect H&S formation organized, okay, for it to play out, for the market to flush, and that certainly didn't occur. Why didn't it occur? Because of OPEC, okay? So we've certainly pushed higher, we've closed the gap, okay, and the market has reversed subsequently. So certainly needs to be respected to a large extent, certainly will be respected, okay, so uh, keep an eye on that. Okay, now, <clears throat> from my understanding, given the fact that that gap is closed, there's nothing now stopping this German DAX from moving lower. Really, it was all about that gap. The focus certainly was on the gap itself. And now looking to potentially retest that 5550. 10550 and potentially 10400. So given the fact that the market certainly has pushed higher, it's still a lower high. Spare that in mind. Okay, try and um, uh, interpret that as a lower high. So... In essence, the buy still remains bearish on the German DAX. Okay, 10 minute chart on the German DAX at present. Uh, we've certainly, like I said, we went and uh, attempted to close the high above uh, the gap above, so should I say. And now we are certainly having this uh, key support level in place. So if the, if the German DAX flushes down to 610, you are looking 10 610, you are looking at support and potentially 10 570 as well. Okay, so European indices still remain weak, and therefore that should drag the FTSE and uh, the NASDAQ lower as well. NASDAQ is into resistance as well which I'll do a separate uh, chart and analysis on. Okay, now in terms of the French CAC daily chart, you can see we're back into that key resistance topping tail, horizontal resistance, therefore looking for risk off. That 60 minute chart itself, really, it's uh, we're in no man's land at present, to be honest. Uh, if anything, bias remains bearish given the Italian referendum on the weekend. A lot of uncertainty going into that uh, potential decision. Okay, so again, looking for risk aversion. In terms of the FTSE 100, let's see exactly where we are now. I actually short the FTSE. We did actually manage to close the gap at 6840, impressively. Okay, now we're looking to potentially move lower. Okay, from my understanding, in terms of the FTSE, you are going to get some turbulence back down here at 6825. If we break that, then you're looking at 6810 on the FTSE 100, and the next potential support is 6780. So let's see how much we can flush. That's the important thing, okay? Let's see how much we flush in this market. Certainly looking for risk aversion, like I've explained. Uh, again, you are looking at 6810, possibly acting as support. Uh, you do have resistance here at 6820, or sorry, support here at 6820. And it'll be interesting to see how the market responds and reacts there. Okay, in terms of the 60-minute uh, chart on the FTSE, you're into horizontal resistance. This bull flag certainly played out very well, but we are now into resistance. Okay, 6840, potential top in place. Okay. Daily chart on the FTSE 100, again, you're into resistance, that horizontal resistance zone. Okay, even though oil prices are higher, it'll be interesting to see if we can continue. Uh, oil prices approaching reading the 48.5 level now. Okay, so a lot of the bullish news certainly is factored in. The Aussie and Kiwi certainly aren't rallying on this oil price rally. So again, it certainly does remain circumspect to a large extent. Also, we all know there's a H&S formation brewing on the FTSE on the weekly chart and daily chart. And that certainly will keep the FTSE 100 in check as well. Okay, just bear in mind China, Nikkei topping out, USD, JPY topping out, Aussie, Kiwi weak, and the only thing that's running at present is oil. Okay, and it's not exactly a healthy sign. Okay, on that note, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye now.